We are tracking post tropical cyclone Lee as it continues up the New England coast. The huge storm continues to bring 50 to 60 mile per hour winds and heavy rain and storm surges to the New England coast. And CNN's Gary Tuckman got up close with the storm while on board a plane that is tracking it. The Gulf Stream 4 is typically a business jet, but this one is reconfigured. And its business is to help protect lives. These are the hurricane hunters, eight scientists, engineers, pilots. They work for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, known as NOAA. Paul Flaherty is the flight director and a flight meteorologist. We want to make sure we're collecting data in data sparse areas in which there's currently no data available, or very little data available, for the weather models to use to make forecasts. For this mission, this aircraft flies at altitudes between 41 and 45,000 feet. It travels around 500 miles per hour. This is essentially a flying weather station, a weather station that goes to the weather. For the next eight hours, the men and women of the NOAA Corps will fly in this high altitude reconnaissance jet above, below, around, and in front of Hurricane Lee. I think for now we'll be fine, but... Yeah, it looks like uh, plenty of space to maneuver around things. After the jet leaves Lakeland, Florida, skies are clear. At this high altitude, you can clearly see storm-churned whitecaps in the ocean. It doesn't take long, though, for the sunshine to disappear. The flight gets turbulent as Hurricane Lee lurks ominously below us. All the while, science is taking place. This screen shows 34 locations where a tube, known as a drop sand, or sand, will be dropped out of the plane. So this is the next drop sun that's going to be dropped. Rebecca Keller, NOAA engineer. What is in the drop sun? Um, so the drop sun consists of a sensor, um, and we have a circuit board inside as well as a battery. Um, and the sensor is picking up humidity, air temperature, uh, pressure, wind direction, and wind speed. And about every 10 minutes, another drop sun with a parachute that is deployed is launched to the ground. Along with the sons, the plane also has radar in its nose, Doppler radar in its tail, and two pilots up front flying with a deep sense of purpose. I joined the NOAA Corps as did all of my counterparts because we love to serve our country. We care about um, our the citizens, and so it's really rewarding to know that I am like right at the front lines and risking my life in order to help the lives of everyone else that are back home. The marathon flight is almost over. All right, so that is the last side of the... Woohoo! Woohoo, deep. And as the plane heads back to Florida, out the window... Looking good. ...a spectacular sunset. Yeah, so we're out of the storm environment, obviously. Um, could be just fair weather cumulus on our way back to Florida. As the plane gets ready to land, time for the hurricane hunters to decompress and get mentally ready for more eight-hour trips to come. So yeah, we kind of live up here, spend more time together than we do at home, go home, sleep, eat, and repeat, you know, and get back up here, uh, start collecting the data again. Anderson, the aircraft we were on is not NOAA's only hurricane hunter. They also fly the P-3 Orion. It's a larger plane, it fits more people, it flies low altitudes, it flies through hurricane eye walls. I've been on it before, needless to say, the turbulence is intense. Either way, the important data gathered from both these planes and both these missions that is then embedded into computer models makes it much easier for meteorologists to give accurate forecasts. What a cool assignment. One that I'm glad I didn't have to do. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> now that everybody's back on the ground and safe, Everyone's it's safe. like, oh, that was an excellent idea to send Gary up on that plane. Gary Tuckman, thanks so much.